Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to the treacherous tree world of Forearms. Koros, land of the Tetramans. Life here isn't exactly a walk in the park, which is why Tetramans need the right tool for the right disaster, forged from the webbing of the very same monsters that are out to get them. These mighty warriors go to great lengths to obtain the raw material, melting it down and reforging it into the Tetramandian War Spear. With plenty of sharp accessories to boot, what better way to test their product than to take on a behemoth or two? The Tetramans have mastered the art of survival, but I think it's best that you and I keep moving. Onward! Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers to Petropia, the crown jewel homeworld of Diamond Head. With the Petrosapiens and Subsapiens exhausted by an endless civil war, their unseen adversaries, the Anthrosapiens, sprung a surprise sonic attack from the shadowy depths. Shattering the crystalline weaponry of their unsuspecting foes. Reluctantly, the Petros and Subs joined forces to survive the greatest threat they'd ever known. They crafted a sonic response of their own. A wondrous war machine. Its crystal prongs absorbing the Anthrosidian sound and fury, focusing it as one bombastic blast right back at their enemies. It will take the Anthros eons to reform. Threat averted, but not eliminated, for this is the Battle Eternal. Onward! Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to the planet Pyros, home of the happy hothead heat blast. Even the warm-blooded need to cool off now and again, especially when things really start to heat up. It's a holiday celebration, Pyronite style. Tradition one, a hot-footed race to the top of Mount Helios, the biggest, baddest volcano on all of Pyros. Tradition two, escape the fiery embrace of the lava dress. So much for thrills, it's time for the chills. Tradition three, Drop the ice egg into the molten core of Pyros, setting off a chain reaction that cools down the liquid lava landscape, which not only keeps the planet from overheating, but also triggers the party to end all parties. Yowza! This shindig's still a little hot for me. Onward! Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to the planet Kenet, home to Accelerate and his fleet-footed folk. Even though the pace of life for Kinocellarans is fast, they still find time to let off a little steam. Like everything else on their planet, sports are supercharged. And we're not just talking about team spirit. Crackling thunderbolts let the games begin. Is it just me, or do these plays really fly by? The fans certainly enjoy the quick pace. But there's more to victory than just speed. A well-placed shot can also come as a real shock to the system. And that was just the first point. Ah, I don't know how much more excitement I can take, so... Onward! Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to Galvin Prime, home to gray matter species of super scientists. A power outage is more than just an inconvenience for the Galvins. Life-changing research happens around the clock here, so these brainiacs can't afford to get caught in a blackout. But the solution isn't always as simple as paying the electric bill. And when you've got pesky isoderic parasites snacking on your power supply, a flawless fail-safe plan is in order. Shoe bugs, shoe! Of course, there's no such thing as a quick fix. Because problems come in all shapes and sizes. That's why the Galvins are always one step ahead. Looks like the lab won't be closing early after all. As for us, onward. Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to the watery depths of the ocean planet of Cascaro, homeworld of Overflow. The Cascan pirates have been busy, and now they're heavy with gold. What do you do once you amass a ton of the glittering goods? 
put it in a piggy bank, of course. And there's no safer stronghold on the Caskin Seas. Security of this installation is second to none. But with that much booty, it's bound to attract scallywags out to pirate the pirates. Like these ruffians. They don't look like they're here to make a deposit. But it's not so easy to make an early withdrawal around these waters. Silent tentacle sentinels are stationed to keep out the riffraff. And these are no ordinary guards. They're psychic, able to read the thoughts of any creeping criminals. Bad move, bandits. Your number is up. And the cask and gold is safe. For now. Let's be sure to keep our thoughts on something positive, like our next world. Onward! Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to the cosmic paradox that is Fulmus, home to Shock Rock. Much like the Fulmini themselves, this is a rocky globe held together by pure energy. Once a strong Spartan society, the cracks started to show, with warlords fighting over energy to hold their kingdoms together. Ultimately, their greed and hunger for individual power tore their world apart. With their planet in pieces, the Fulmini reunited under a common goal. They became conquerors of the cosmos, using wormhole bridges to carry them to unsuspecting nearby systems with adequate resources for them to plunder. Back home, the Fulmini re-energized their drained planet with ill-gotten goods. They may be marauders, but they do it to save their world. Onward! Welcome explorers and omniplanetary travelers to yet another season in the lush landscapes of Wildvine's homeworld, Flores Verdance. Take a moment to appreciate the high points of the scenery. Like the ancient Verdo world tree that literally breathes life into the ecosystem. As all living things, this natural wonder has a life cycle of its own. Luckily, the Florana are ever watchful of their delicate environment, letting one hand wash the other. They heard mush roars, massive pollen-collecting insectoid creatures, coaxing the temperamental bugs to share their accumulated bounty with the world tree. You see, the Florana understand there's a difference between interfering in the natural order of things and helping it along. Now that's what I call high-stakes gardening. Until next time, Onward! Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to Cannonbolt's home world, Arburia. Arburia is known throughout the universe for its unbeatable beaches, where Arburian pelerotas always make sure to catch their fair share of rays and waves. But with big fun comes big dangers, like the Arburian Car Caradon, or as the locals know it, the beast with a billion teeth, infamous around these parts for spoiling many a hard-earned vacation. Not once to give up a good day in the surf, the Pelorotas put a fresh spin on lifeguarding. Quite literally, it seems. Looks like doing your duty on a Buria can be just as much fun as taking the day off. Unless you're a mega shark, that is. Ouch! The water is safe once again, reminding us that the difference between predator and prey is how you control your role. I don't know about you, but I think I've had enough downtime for one trip. Onward! Welcome back, explorers and omniplanetary travelers, to the planet of Lepidoptera, homeworld of Stinkfly. With countless numbers of young stink brood afoot, it takes an army to feed them. Lepidopteran sky soldiers will go to great lengths to satisfy their younglings' appetites, even if it means risking their own lives. This crew better watch out. A tongue beetle. Their cargo's been nicked. With hungry mouse to feed above, this underground detour costs precious seconds the Lepidopteran elite force can't afford. Darkness gives our brave heroes a chance to shine in the battle for precious resources. Deeper in the lair of the tongue beetle, they come mandible to mandible with the theme itself. These sky soldiers make short work and a fast exit. Consider this pungent package extracted. Onward! 